Good morning, Ben. Howdy, Bates. How's the undertaking business? Oh, this town is too healthy. If something doesn't happen soon, I'll have to bamboos. Yeah, it sure have been mighty peaceful like for a long time. Galleries up the street. I ain't so particular what I shoot at. Better give me that gun, hombre. And the lead that goes with it? Now, Dan. Out a cyclone doesn't come up and blow you right off the street. Your cyclones are all whirlwinds, fella. You'd better run along before a storm breaks. Because I got a feeling I'm going to cloud up and rain all over you. You and who's on? Just me. You didn't look so tough. I figured having to use a gun on you. Well, you don't have to, hard boiled. you fight. 
You got me licked, fella. Not what my jaw tells me. <laughs> I think I know something we both need. Sure. And I'm going to buy them. Great fight, great fight. Liniment or mule cake? Well, my jaw says uh, liniment, but my stomach says mule cake. Make it two drinks for two gentlemen. Ben McClure and uh, John Mason. Mason? Say you're not old Dad Mason's son, the man I work for. Yep, Dan Mason's my dad. Well, I'm up. Uh... Say, just suppose I'd have licked you. Well, I'd have lost my job. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I'd have seen that you got a raise. Anyway, Ben, here's the friendship. May it last. And there's no bust in it, old son. Boys are waiting for you back at the express office. It's been a long time since I've seen Dad. Well, then I ain't going to keep you waiting. Besides, I got to get that freight on its way. Come on. I'm glad to see you. I suppose this time you'll tell me a mule kicked you. Well, uh, this time I ain't telling. Anyway, this is John L. Sullivan, Alice. He's a great guy. After you get to know him. I'm glad Ben's taken such a liking to you, Mr. Uh... Mason. John Mason. I think you've done him a lot of good already, Mr. Mason. Ben's needed a friend like you for some time. Oh, we were just getting acquainted. Just getting acquainted? Well, it sure will be interesting to meet you when you're really good friends. I suppose we'll be seeing a lot of you now. I hope so, miss. Ben must bring you up to dinner sometime. I'd like you to meet my brother. Sure. He's a great guy. Well, John, we better go look your dad up. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, John, let's give your dad the big surprise. Reach high. Dad, John. Give me that last bag. Stop that gun! Keep up. Back up, both of you. The man who shot me wore a polka dot neckerchief. I saw it, Dad. I didn't see his face, but I'll find him.
This way, boys. Take it easy, old son. Are you gonna pull him through, Doc? He'll pull himself through. If two bullets couldn't kill him, I reckon I can't. You'll have to get someone to look after him while you're away. Well, I'm not much of a nurse, Doc, but I'll do the best I can. I suspect a man wouldn't mind getting shot, just for a chance to have you straighten him out. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, Doc, and thanks. I'll keep a close watch on him. Thanks, Doc. That's quite all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. You better have another drink, Rudd. You look like you need it. Getting all that dough don't make up for Joe and Harry lying out there with slugs in them. There'll be enough left over to pay for a swell funeral. For the guy who killed him. Uh, he's not dead yet. He'll probably pull through. I figured you might want to make sure that he didn't. You know, he's apt to make it pretty tough if he finds out who killed his father. Uh, he doesn't know anything. Dead men usually don't. And if I was as fast with a gun as you are, I'd finish the job right. The way he finished Joe and Harry. He's a great guy, old Dad Mason. You know, that must be why I sort of took to him right off. You like him a lot, don't you? Well, who could help like in a game guy like that? You know, he's too tough to kill. He must be if you tried your best. Don't worry about him, Ben. Not with you looking after him. You're about the only thing who pulled me through. If I got in a jam like that. You make yourself right at home, won't you, Alice? Just like it was your own place? Of course. You know, I always kind of hoped maybe it would be uh, sometime. Anyway, you might sort of get used to it, being here and all that. Why, uh, you might even learn to like it while you're making yourself at home. Well, I gotta be going. Goodbye, Ben.
care of you, sis? We've been combing the country for that gang. I thought I saw somebody sneaking around back of the cabin. I guess I must have been mistaken. How is he? The doctor said he was out of danger. This is my brother, Rudd. Howdy. Howdy. You had a mighty close call, John. Mighty close. Howdy, Pete. Hello there. After three weeks of looking for that gang, you don't expect anybody to collect that, do you? Well, if they do, they'd better get it before young Mason gets on his feet. I'd hate to be in them fellas' shoes when he starts riding again. Because I don't figure he'll ever stop until he finds them. Tell Ben I'd like to see him when he pulls in, will you? Sure, he ought to be rolling in about an hour if he's on time. Boys are waiting for you this side of the pass. All right, stand ready, boys. Here they come. Aren't you glad you won't have any more of that after tomorrow? Don't you think a good doctor could find something else wrong with me? I'm afraid not. Your pulse is regular. Your appetite is outrageous. And the doctor says your heart's perfectly sound. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things about a fellow's heart that a doctor doesn't know anything about. I suppose he does have to guess a lot of things just as much as the nurse does. About what, for instance? Oh, well, for instance, whether her patient might want to bean soup or porridge. Only it'll have to be porridge because it's waiting to be warm. Hey, don't tear that out. I won't have anything to read tonight. Petticoats, corsets, diapers. Is that what a gentleman reads? Well, there's a lot of other things in there besides that. Well, let's see. Bicycles, knives, forks. You know, I've been thinking the last few days. There's something I want to buy. And I thought you might help me pick it out. I'd love to, John. Well, the best ain't going to be none too good. I want to get something that'll wear for a long time. Didn't you think it would? Well, you got to make sure. You don't buy them every day. Only I didn't know what size to get. What size did you think? Oh, about nine, I guess. I think we have the same size feet. I was thinking that if I got a pair of boots, maybe with some fancy spurs, that it'd be a way of showing Ben that I'm not forgetting what he did for me. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for that fella. Anytime I have a chance. Of course you would. Angie Kyle tell me up again. Well, that's a dirty trick. Yeah, and if one of those birds tries to use that ring to get himself married, well, I hope he has triplets. Well, don't worry, Ben. If Alice is willing to marry you, I'll give you a ring. Just like the one you lost. What makes you think she wouldn't marry me? Ain't I known her long enough? Well, sure, Ben, only... She hadn't met that friend of yours then. 
It's taken him a long time to get well, ain't it? Oh, you're crazy. Don't be a chump, Ben. What do you think he's doing while you're away? Crocheting? After all you've done for him, I think he's a skunk to be making love to her behind your back. <coughs> you're a liar! Hold it, Ben. He didn't mean nothing. Come on, I'll ride home with you. All right. But if he opens his mouth again, I'll break him wide open. Oh, come on. How's the old son today? Almost as good as new, Ben. No bandages after tomorrow. Yeah? Well, that's about the only news that can cheer me up. You met Alice's brother. Yeah, but I guess you don't remember me. I remember, all right. Only at that time, you weren't wearing that polka dot neckerchief. Yeah, you were just uh, sort of getting your bearings then. I'm still getting them. But a lot quicker than I expected. Well, Ben, as long as Alice isn't here, I guess I better be getting along. Guess you'll be going after that reward they posted today. Reward isn't what I'm after, Rudd. Well, good luck, Mason. See you tomorrow, Rudd. So long, Ben. That's her brother. Yep. That ain't all. Well, he came mighty close to being my brother-in-law today. What do you mean? Well, he might have been if road agents hadn't stuck me up and stole the ring I bought for his sister. Oh, so they're at it again, eh? Yeah, and I'd like to get my hands on the yellow-livered skunks. It took me five months to save up to buy that ring. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah, and the tough part of it is it'll be another five months now before I can ask her. What makes you think you need a ring to ask her? Well, to tell you the truth, John, I figured that if she saw it and tried it on, it might be harder for her to say no. Oh, a ring wouldn't make any difference to a girl like that, Ben. But you think it wouldn't be taking too much of a chance? You go over and ask her to marry you tomorrow, and I'll take your run for you. Will you, John? Sure. Gee, that'll be swell. Don't it worry you in unpacking that much gold with you? Well, not when we're pulling out ahead of schedule. It'll sure be disappointing to any road agents looking for us a couple hours from now. Yeah, I reckon Bates will be disappointed, too. Well, can't some of you boys oblige Bates? Send some business his way? That might be arranged. I never figured my shooting was so bad. A doctor would be much use. Well, I'm glad to hear you're such a good shot, Red. Must have been powerful humiliating to those fellas that had me marked for the undertaker. They couldn't do any better than send me to the doctor. Well, I gotta get that gold shipment out. So long, Red. You men get over and load yourselves in that wagon. You're riding with him. anybody does get this part, there will sure be a surprise in store for him. Yeah, but if your plan works out, and I think it will, no one's going to get it. You said a heap, Wallace, when you said dead men don't know nothing. Well. It's taken you a long time to figure it out.
All right, come on out of there, you hombres, with your hands in the air. All right, now get up in that seat. Who do you think you're talking to? Just a couple of skunks. Get up there. All right, get going and keep going. Right straight ahead. that Ben, let him have it.
Where's Rudd? Where is he? Why, he, he's gone to town. Just now? Well, perhaps an hour ago. That horse hasn't been sweating for an hour, Alice. What do you want of my brother? Didn't he tell you? Oh, John, what's happened? Why are you looking for him? What's he done? Tell me. John, I have a right to know. Why did you come here this way? Oh, it's nothing for you to worry about, Alice. I just want to ask him a few questions. I didn't expect to see you back so soon, Mason. You didn't ever expect to see me come back, did you, Red? It wouldn't have made a lot of difference to me if you hadn't. It's going to make a whole lot of difference to the fellow who killed my dad. What's that got to do with me? Who killed him, Red? What do I know about it? That's what I'm asking you. Then ask it plain, so I won't make no mistake about what you mean. The only mistake you made was when you forgot to change that neckerchief. Quit stalling, Red. I trailed you all the way back to the ranch. You're bats, Mason. I was at the ranch all day. That's what your sister said. Are you calling my sister a liar? Oh, I don't blame your sister for trying to save you. It's just too bad she's got such a rat for a brother. Here, I'm speaking to rats, Mason. My sister ain't gonna have one making love to her. And if that ain't plain enough, I'm meaning you. Because if you don't stay away from me... My... I'm not asking your advice. I'm not advising you, I'm telling you. This would be a pretty good time for you to be pulling out of this town. Well, perhaps I will when I finish a job I've got to do. Then you better finish it in an hour. Because if you're still around here, when... when that clock hits four, I'll shoot you on sight. Well, in that case, I guess it'll take me till just about two minutes after four to complete the job I've got to do. You may be the kind of a chump that'd let a double crosser like that get away with it, but who said I would? I told you it was dealing off at the bottom of the deck. Everybody knew it but you. You don't have to tell me that now.
the fellow called you a skunk the other day, I knocked him flat. But he was right. Only you're lower than that. Well, you double-crossing sidewalk. Wait a minute, Ben. Red's been talking to you. Filling you full of booze so you'd listen to him. Is that what you think of me? I'll show you what I think of you. Well, what are you waiting for? Yellow? You've got me licked. Alice. I just heard. You can't go through with it, John. You can't. Why, he's my brother. You think it's easy for me to forget that? But don't you see that it's not just Rob that I'm thinking of. Why, if anything happened to either of you, I'd... Oh, John, it, it mustn't happen. I'm sorry, Alice. He'll listen to you, Ben. You've got to stop him. I, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to... To run? You won't let him, Ben. You will do something, please. He won't harm you, brother. I'll see to that. You'd better go back to the ranch, Alice. And don't worry. Well, goodbye, Ben. I'm sorry that Ellis had to be at the ranch when I trailed Rudd there after he held us up. Don't ever tell her, Ben, that the man who killed my dad was her brother. If he's coming, he ought to be here in five minutes. That suits me. Just rode around the corner of the express office.
Here comes Mason now. Sorry, John. I didn't... Oh, that's all right, Ben. I know something that'll fix you up. Sure. And they're on me. Again. It's getting dark, John. It ain't sundown, is it? Maybe you better tell Alice. I won't be home for dinner.
But my future prospects looks pretty good. <laughs> I get you. I get you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <